just try to contextualize why are we doing M&E and the approaches that we have chosen and then move towards where are we fitting within the AU data processes because are we just doing this, are we fitting into the bigger picture and also for us to share and understand what is the bigger picture, what do, why are we measuring ourselves and then we we'll also talk about the key um, um, indicators that have been selected to assist us in uh, fitting into uh, the AU data process and how do we intend to utilize these results? How do we communicate these results? And probably a bit of a way forward. What do we intend to do from here? So I think Margaret uh, started um, talking about this and um, she indicated basically where we fit in the puzzle of the African Union. She talked about the pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa where regulatory system strengthening has been um, noted that it is imperative for both improving local production and also secondly to improve access to medicines. But I also thought maybe beyond the pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa, we may also wish to look at where do we fit, where do we, um, uh, where does regulatory system strengthening fit in the context of um, access to medicines at the continental level as well as globally. So I picked out a number of strategic decisions that have been made at the AU level as well as at the global level. Starting with the African health strategy. And I think we are aware that the African Union adopted the African health strategy and it was undergoing a review in 2015. And it has been adopted at the ministerial level and at the AU level. So, how do they look at medicines within the African health strategy? They're looking at medicines as one of the key strategic approaches towards achieving universal health coverage in Africa. So, strategic pillar number 4F of the African health strategy is on essential medicines commodity security, and supply systems. And I've picked out a statement within that approach that specifically indicates that regulation of medical products and technology should be prioritized to support availability of quality products. And I think the question is, how are we moving towards that? Are our efforts at the national level, at the regional level, at the continental level, moving us towards supporting availability of quality products to the people that need them. Hence, the need for us to assess ourselves, to assess our efforts as to where are we going. Because we are ultimately going to be reporting on that strategic pillar of the African Health Strategy. The second one, I also tried to zoom in to the Sustainable Development Goal number three. And within that, the goal actually focuses on ensuring healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. And 3B indicates that there is need to support research and development of vaccines and medicines for communicable and non-communicable diseases and that primarily affect developing countries. And we know quite a number of African countries fall within that category of developing countries. And it singles out that there is need to provide access to medicines for all, which literally ties in with what the African health uh, strategy is saying. Now I think the question is, what is the role of regulation within that context? Then I think Margaret talked about the pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa, which is focusing on improving locally uh, I mean, improving local production of pharmaceuticals with the view to do two things. One is to improve public health through increased access to medicines, and secondly, to contribute to economic development of the continent, job creation uh, of the people of the continent. Because if we improve our pharmaceutical sector, most definitely to create jobs for others. Probably we may also, if we produce quality products, we'll also be able to export the products that are coming from Africa, thereby 
improving the, uh, or growing the economies of the African continent. So I think in that puzzle we also fit perfectly because it identifies two streams of work. One on regulatory system strengthening and the second one on industrial development. But I think the question is, how are we fitting the pieces of the puzzle together to ensure that we reach our intended purpose, which is improving local production of medicines? Then, um, going further, there is also the AU roadmap on shared responsibility and global solidarity for TB, AIDS, and malaria response in Africa. And pillar two of this um, AU roadmap indicates that or identifies the pivotal role of access to medicines in regulatory system strengthening and harmonization in tackling the three diseases. Actually, it recognizes that we cannot achieve universal access, which is being promoted through the roadmap, without focusing on access to medicines. And there, um, I also try to tie it in with the catalytic framework that has been adopted by the African Union in 2014. Catalytic framework on HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria, and the sustainable development. And I think we have to keep in mind that we have committed ourselves as a continent to eradicate TB and AIDS by 2030. But I think we cannot do this unless we improve access to the needed medical products and technologies. So I think the question is, what is the role that each one of, of us is playing to fit in that puzzle? Because there are goals that are made at the higher level. And we keep doing certain things at the lower level, at the national level, at the regional level, at the continental level. But how do we fit within that bigger puzzle, within that bigger context? That's why we thought of probably we need to monitor ourselves, we need to evaluate ourselves, that are we going the right direction? Are we going towards reaching these goals that we have committed ourselves globally as well as at the continental level? Now, maybe before we, we even move into the indicators themselves, there's, I think, a point that I wanted us to reflect on. What have we agreed to do at the regional and the continental level as a collective, as member states of the African Union? We have committed ourselves that we want to strengthen, to strengthen regulatory systems in Africa. How do we intend to do that? We intend to do that through harmonization at the regional level, with the view that if we harmonize, probably we'll pull each other, we'll strengthen each other towards the journey of our system strengthening uh, in Africa. That is where actually the AMRH was born, the African Medicines Regulatory Harmonization Program was born. The AMRH has been initiated as a program that is aimed at improving the fragmented regulatory systems in Africa. Because we agreed, I think, we did an assessment and we agreed, we noted that we have a challenge. We have weak regulatory systems. And these weak regulatory systems are also so fragmented to the extent that in a small country, small regulatory authority, if we look inside just ourselves, it is difficult to move on. But if we hold hands as countries, we might be able to move towards uh, regulatory system strengthening in Africa. So we agreed to move from country-based approach to a collaborative regional approach, which is simplified, using common documents, doing joint regional activities, working together as a continent, sharing our resources, to move towards regulatory system strengthening. So we started with a stepwise approach. We started with harmonizing the and streamlining technical requirements for products registration, leading to increased and timely product access. And as you see, our monitoring and evaluation framework has taken that approach. We have started with focusing on registration and GMP inspection because GMP is part of the registration. But also based on the uh, processes that we have adopted within the AU, I mean within the AMRH program, we have also focused on information systems uh, strengthening in our, in our rates and QMS, quality management systems. So we have included that in the m and framework. 
But that's not the end of it. I think as we grow as AMRH, we are moving into pharmacovigilance, we are moving into other regulatory functions and other regulated products, we should be able to build upon our M&E uh, system to cover for these other regulatory functions. So, what is the pathway that we have chosen? I think it's just a reminder. Most of us know this as the pathway that we have adopted for the AMRH. We have adopted a pathway that basically entails doing five key things. Reviewing and updating our legal frameworks because we know that is where it starts from. That is the basis of regulation. That is where we get the mandate to regulate the market. So we identified this as a challenge that we have outdated and sometimes weak and even other countries that don't have legal frameworks. So we agreed this is a, one of the approaches that we will do. Secondly, we agreed that we are going to adopt harmonized standards, technical requirements and guidelines. Thirdly, we agreed on working together, work sharing, pulling of resources together so that we move a mile. And I think the common African problem, proverb that says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. So this is the whole idea. Then the fourth one is streamlined decision-making processes. We want to achieve that. We want to be predictable. And lastly, as a capacity strengthening uh, process, we have also agreed to do twinning of NMRAs, especially in the ESC region, that has already started. And I think SADIC actually has developed um, a standard operating procedure for twinning. Mm -hmm. I, 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 short of words, I would call it that. Um, where do we want to head to? This is actually the whole basis for our monitoring and evaluation. Because we want to assess, are we doing these five things that we agreed upon? If we are doing these five things, are we really getting to where we agreed we want to get to? Reducing registration time cycle? Because remember, I think when we did um, a situation analysis in uh, 2009, 2010, we realized that one of the challenges that we have is having too much backlog when it comes to applications. And also taking too long to make a decision on an application. Then the other thing we also want to assess ourselves is are we extending to other regulatory functions? As we said, we started with registration. Have we grown enough? Have we reduced the time cycle? Have we started being efficient and effective on registration that we are now moving towards harmonization of other regulatory functions? Regulatory functions. And also, how are we moving towards strengthening other regs? Because we started with ESC and now we have started with SADIC and then IGAD and West Africa's market says. So how are we walking this path? Because we have defined a pathway. Are we moving forward or are we at the same uh, point? Because sometimes we may be running when we are on a treadmill and we are not going anywhere. But we are expending our energy, right? We are um, spending our energy, but we are at the same level. But are we moving forward? That is the whole reason we are doing the m and &E within AMRH. So, key reflection questions. After all that background that we have shared, we need to ask ourselves, are there clear linkages between our actions as AMRH partners, as member states, as REDS? Is there clear linkage to different stakeholders and achieving key results? The other question is, are our actions moving us towards achieving the results of increased, increasing access to medicines? Because remember, we have singled out those four key frameworks that we are contributing to. The African Health Strategy, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Plan for Africa, and the AU Roadmap on Shared Responsibility. Are we contributing to the achievement of the desired goals in those frameworks? which is access to medicines. How are our actions enabling research and pharmaceutical sector development in Africa? I think these are reflection questions that form the basis for our monitoring and evaluation within the AMRH uh, initiative. So, 
Why are we evaluating ourselves? I think it's a question that we could, all of us need to ask. Why are we here? Why are we evaluating ourselves? A number of um, reasons have been singled out. Firstly, we want to ensure accountability at national level, at regional level, and at continental level. I mean, if we commit ourselves, we have to be accountable to results. Because I think we are spending resources, we are spending our time to do certain things. Are we achieving what we agreed we want to achieve? Are we accountable? And I think the question is, accountable to who? And accountable for what? We are accountable to the African people because whatever we are doing, we are doing it to increase access to medical products for the African people. So I think whatever we do in our everyday work, we want to be accountable to results. So this is one of the reasons that we are doing monitoring and evaluation. Then secondly, we want to support evidence-based policy. When they are making um, policies at the national level, at the AU level, at the regional level, we want to generate the needed evidence. Because unless we tell them, for example, you're not funding us enough. Look, this is how big the market is. This is the piece of work that we have to do. This is what we have committed ourselves to. May you please assist us? Because we cannot achieve increased access to medicines for improved health of the African people unless we have the right resources. But we can be able to say that if we monitor ourselves and if we track what is happening within the sector at all levels. Then also, we want to inform policy and political ad advocacy for generating buy-in at national, regional, and continental level. I think we will all agree that it's not everybody who thinks regulatory system strengthening really has a role to play when it comes to uh, improving public health. So we want to generate that evidence so that we are able, when we are communicating, when we are advocating that we should have more commitment to regulatory system strengthening, it has to be based on evidence. We also want to provide basis for decision making and priority setting in political advocacy, resource mobilization, and identification of new areas of intervention. Because if we monitor and evaluate, we will know the gaps. We will know where the challenges still persist. And based on that, then we can propose what are the new areas of intervention that we need to get into. We also want to see that there is effective execution of the AMRH program at all times based on evidence. So it is a tool for reflection and learning. We have made all those commitments. We want to harmonize. We want to ensure that we use common standards, harmonized standards. We want to do joint work, but we need to reflect and learn at all times so that we improve our actions. We also want to document best practices and support intra as well as inter-regional level learning. If we don't document, it will be very difficult for someone to learn from TFDA what TFDA is doing, someone who is in, say, for example, Seychelles, to learn. But if we document, it will make it easier for us to learn from each other. But also, we know we started with ESC. There are a number of lessons that we have learned through the implementation in ESC. And SADIC has initiated its own processes, and EGAD has also started doing something. But unless we document, we monitor and evaluate, we may not be able 